What's going on you guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and welcome to the video. In this video, we're talking all about a very special, popular company and that company is called Tesla. So I wanted to title this video, Should You Buy Tesla After Their Latest Quarterly Earnings? So in this video, we're going to talk all about their quarterly earnings, give my opinion, whether you guys want to hear it or not. And um, it's not necessarily bad, but I will talk about how I feel about the company along with analysts' opinions, price targets, some interesting things that you guys might not have known about Tesla for all my Tesla supporters. So guys, it's gonna be a fun video. I don't talk about Tesla very much, but I thought, you know, it's popular right now, so why not make a video on a different topic just to try something out? But anyways, these are your market minutes, so we're also going to recap the market, see what's pushing Wall Street, gold and silver, and all the other stocks that we talk about. So use the timestamps in the description, please, if you wanna get straight to the Tesla stuff. Otherwise, watch the whole video, and of course, smash the like button and subscribe. So that brings us to our next point. If you do support me in the channel and all the videos, then there's two quick things I kindly ask, and that first thing is to explode the like button. Helps me so, so very much with my videos and the algorithm, along with if you are a new viewer, but you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, but you appreciate videos just like this and all the videos that I will make in the future, then of course, don't forget to cash that subscribe button and ring the market bell for notifications. Let's get this channel to 30,000 subscribers. We're almost at 29.6-ish, and um, let's just keep on going. So guys, the first thing we have to do is comment of the day, and I'm gonna pick three interesting comments. Please drop some comments below and let me know what your thoughts are on Tesla. Would you buy it at these levels? Would you short it? Would you dare short it? Or would you, you know, what's your plan? Just tell me what you guys think about Tesla and their recent quarterly earnings. Um, I do got to say though, pretty impressive. First comment of the day goes to Mutant Riff. I wouldn't be betting on stimulus in the next 12 days. That's also another thing you guys can let me know. Do you think stimulus is going to happen? I think it's inevitable, but how long is it going to take is the question. And how much of an impact will that have on the markets if we do, in fact, you know, if we don't get stimulus? Because we know the market's just waiting on that. Yesterday's video was all about dividend paying gold stocks, and you guys offered a lot of awesome comments with your favorite companies. We're gonna take the next comment from Ed. PM correcting is taking longer than I expected, but I'm still expecting one last flush for gold to go down to 1780 to 1820 range before the next leg up. I'll go all in then. Better hold on tight for now. So we'll see if we get it. I mean, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't rule that out. Gold's looking pretty strong around 1900, trying to consolidate around there, but. And then last but not least, Forche Collection, Yamana Gold, Grand Columbia, and Kinross also pay dividends. So I will be taking note of a bunch of dividend paying gold and silver mining stocks today from your comments. I'm adding them to my list of stocks. And that brings us to our next point where we've started a new watch list for departure stocks specifically. So if you guys tune into departure stocks, it's our brand new channel. We post almost every day on this channel. And um, I take a lot of viewer requests. It's a little more interactive. It's more raw content, unedited. And um, if you guys wanna see the different side of you know, me and Departures Capital, this is a great place to go. So check out our new channel. Don't forget to subscribe, check out our videos. Let me know what you think. And I will be posting a new video on that channel just after this one, guys. So check out our new channel. Now it's time to dive into all of the market related news. So Wall Street dips in choppy trade as investors look for stimulus. So of course we're still looking for stimulus. NASDAQ, S&P and the Dow all in the green now. We are in fact seeing a sell off for gold though. And I know exactly what's pushing that. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in just a second. Wall Street's main index is swung between slight gains and losses on Thursday as investors held out for more fiscal stimulus against the backdrop of economic data pointing to a slowing labor market. So what I think is really pushing that, you know, sell off in gold and silver, once again, is a strengthening of the US dollar, although we are below 93 now this time. We're still below 93, so hopefully, you know, we can keep it there. There's a dead cat bounce and um, it doesn't last long, fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. Bottom line, I think right now is the dollar needs to weaken and the longer stimulus takes, the dollar could potentially continue to rise. So let's get that stimulus going. I'd love that for gold and silver. As I said, S&P and the NASDAQ in the green today and the markets have staged a pretty nice recovery. We haven't gotten back up to those fresh all-time highs like we did not too long ago. The S&P has recovered, although pulled back a little bit since the most recent rally. So 
we're probably going to have a little bit more choppy trade up until the whole big event. Now guys, gold's trading above 1900 though. That is what I want to see, even though it is down 1.17% and silver is down 1.69%. Technically, silver is holding on better today because usually it underperforms gold by about two to three times. So not too, too bad of a day for precious metals. But I wanted to talk about this one interesting article from CNBC before we dive into Tesla. And we will be diving into Tesla very, very shortly. So Goldman is calling for a bull market for commodities in 2021 on dollar moves and inflation risk. This is headline CNBC News. Markets are increasingly worried about inflation returning as a result of historical fiscal spending and continued low interest rates, which the bank says will likely drive more investment in commodities. The bank sees upside ahead in non-energy commodities like metals and agricultural, citing tightening supply amid greater demand from China and adverse weather conditions. Let's just cut to the chase, guys. Analysts at the bank on Thursday predicted 12-month return of 30% on the S&P's Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, recommending long positions on silver, copper, gold, U.S. gas, Brent crude, and jet regrade. So they're long on gold. Gold is seen as one of those hedges and it has seen its price shoot up 26% this year. Goldman expects the metal to average a price of 2300 per ounce in 2021 up from the predicted average of 1836 per ounce this year. Let's go $2,300 gold. And that's coming from a major bank, guys. So that is uh, some very good news. We do have another minute or two before we dive into Tesla, guys. So let's actually just take a look at a few quick Kitco headlines so gold can see support as focus shifts to U.S. presidential debate Brexit headlines. So we'll see if we get some, uh, you know, we'll see if we get some safe haven buying after today's big event. Who's watching? We're not going to talk politics, but who's watching today? I think I might be watching. Get your popcorn ready. Less than two weeks from the big event, gold, silver, slump, fresh fundamental spark is needed. So this is from Jim Wyckoff. And this is the last headline I'm going to read before we dive into all of the Tesla stuff. So gold and silver futures were down sharply midday U.S. trading on Thursday. Both metals continue to trade in an inverse fashion with the daily movements of the U.S. dollar index, which we've talked about for so long. Now it's time to talk about Tesla, guys, and I won't waste any of your more time. Although if you watched the first eight minutes, you know, and you weren't, you know, tuning into my channel on the regular, maybe, you know, you learned something. So that's cool. Anyways, Tesla is up 1.51%. Did have a little bit of a choppy trading day, spiked up like crazy in the morning, and we're settling, looks like around 4.30. So I haven't taken a look at the charts for Tesla in a while, but um, it, it's quite an impressive looking chart. Now, to be honest, I personally wouldn't buy Tesla at these levels, nor would I have bought them long ago, and I definitely missed out on that tremendous rally that the stock had. It's definitely had a very successful run. So... I want to talk now about their earnings real quick. Tesla stock jumps after record-breaking Q3 earnings, adding $22 billion in market value, so it was up over 5%. Elon Musk's electric car maker delivered nearly 140,000 vehicles last quarter, fueling record operating income of $809 million and free cash flow of $1.4 billion. Very impressive. Tesla's bosses are aiming to deliver 500,000 vehicles this year, requiring the company to produce about 181,000 cars this quarter, 29% more than their quarterly record. The automaker's stock price has soared more than five-fold this year, giving the group a bigger market capitalization than J&J, Procter & Gamble, or J.P. Morgan and Chase. Now, one might argue, and you guys might not like to hear it, has Tesla's share price and market cap and P.E. valuation gotten out of hand? So it's currently valued at $400 billion dollars. But nonetheless, you know, they have done, they have posted some pretty impressive numbers. But like I said, guys, I wouldn't be a buyer at these levels. So let's take a look at a Yahoo Finance article. We're also going to take a look at some really interesting facts when it comes to Tesla, like their top five biggest shareholders and what analysts have to say or think about the company along with their price target. So Tesla blows away estimates as deliveries ramp up, targeting 500,000 by year's end. So it's no doubt that the company is still, is still selling very well, despite this whole global illness and the economy, you know, that um, not every consumer is in a better position than they were, you know, let's say in 2019. I feel like there's a lot of people out there that could be in a worse position. Clearly right now, Tesla's still selling away, so can't argue with the facts. Revenue came in at 8.77 billion versus 8.26 expected and adjusted earnings per share of 76 cents versus 
55 cents. So that is very impressive. Let's see what they have to say. While achieving this goal has become more difficult, delivering half a million vehicles in 2020 remains our target, the company said. Achieving this target depends primarily on quarter over quarter increases in Model Y and Shanghai production, as well as further improvements in logistics and delivery efficiency at higher volume levels. So there is Mr. Musk in his car or SUV. So let's take a look at the top five shareholders of Tesla. And of course, little surprise, Elon Musk is the number one shareholder. Musk was born in South Africa. Musk later founded Service Zip2. Sorry for the history. He was co-founder of PayPal. Musk then co-founded Tesla, among other companies, according to Forbes. Musk is currently the 31st richest person in the world with a net worth of $35.9 billion. Musk owns roughly 38.7 million shares of Tesla, makes him the largest shareholder among both institutions and individuals. Musk owns approximately 21% of all outstanding Tesla shares. Musk's stake is nearly as big as the next four biggest investors, whose combined stake is about 23.2%. So, wow. Next biggest shareholder, Susquehanna Securities. I hope I said that right. Second largest Tesla shareholder. It's a global quantitative trading firm. The firm holds about $347 billion in management, more than 12.1 million shares, 6.6% of the company. The third biggest shareholder, Bailey Guilford & Co. Third largest shareholder, Scottish investment management firm, private partnership that manages $245 billion. They own 12.1 million shares, or roughly 6.5% of all outstanding shares. The fourth largest shareholder, Capital World Investors, Equities focused branch of investment management. They hold 1.8 trillion in assets. They own 10.7 million shares, grew up 5.8% of the company. And finally, Citadel Securities LLC, leading market maker for a diverse group of fixed income and equity products. They've got roughly 30 billion in investment capital. It's the fifth largest shareholder, owns 7.9 million shares, or 4.3% of all outstanding shares. So. Those are your top five shareholders, guys. Very interesting. I wanted to just uh, talk about that real quick. Now, let's get into what are the analysts saying? What are the price targets? What have been you know, the price target changes over the past little while? So for tip ranks, you can just head over to tip ranks and uh, unfortunately, you know, there's an average price target of $353 on the stock that represents a 17.58% downside and 11 analysts recommend a hold, 10 recommend a sell, and only 9 recommend a buy. The most bullish analysts on this website, $578 per share. That would be quite impressive. We are seeing Goldman Sachs reiterate, as of yesterday, a $455 price target. UBS and Credit Suisse all say hold. UBS at $325 and Dan Levy from Credit Suisse at $400. Citigroup. And RBC Capital recommend a sell with Citigroup having a $117 price target reiterated nine days ago. RBC Capital assigned a $339 price target representing 20.88% downside. So guys, when it comes to what analysts have to say about Tesla, I mean, I guess that they are rather bearish due to the fact that maybe they're, you know, a little bit worried valuation perspective. I could totally see why analysts might be concerned when it comes to that. Millennials don't seem convinced. Obviously, if millennials were to listen to analysts, the stock would have never made it as high as it is today. But to be honest, guys, I'm right in the middle. I'm, I'm pretty much just you know neutral on the company. I didn't partake in the initial rally. I wasn't a long-term shareholder. It's been quite impressive to see what Tesla has done. I really think you know what's going to fuel growth is going to be the global economy and how it does over the next year you know we saw the stimulus come it's still coming that's a band-aid and Tesla's doing great in this environment but in a year's time let's see how the economy is going to be doing and I really think that will dictate you know whether or not they're going to be able to sustain the pace of sales you know half a million vehicles per year but I think so far congrats to Tesla and all their shareholders so anyways guys that's it for Tesla's update Wanted to quickly offer my opinion and a few interesting facts and now it's time for the charts, all the good stuff and then we are out of here. So in terms of our first watch list, let's see what's going on. Green Growth, Green Organic Dutchman, Ianthus and Truly, three biggest gainers we are in fact seeing. 
Egypt there met Oxley and high tide three biggest losers on the day. Kira Leaf Holdings hit a fresh 52 week high today, so it's really nice to see those MSOs performing. Good stuff. Now, in terms of dividend stocks, we are seeing Severia, Brookfield, and Bank of Nova Scotia, three biggest gainers. AQN, Bank of Nova Scotia, and iShares, XUT Utilities ETF in the red. In terms of gold and silver stocks, of course, it is a fairly red day other than for Taranga Gold and K92. Pretty much all of our silver mining and gold mining stocks are in the red. African Gold Group, Discovery Metals, and Silver Crest, three biggest losers on the day. Now, let's take a look at the tech stuff. Let's take a look at some tech stocks in terms of tech stocks. We are in fact seeing Virgin Galactic, AEY, and Tesla, three biggest gainers. We are seeing MindMed dip just 3% today after hitting 52 week highs yesterday, but nothing to get too concerned about, hopefully, yet. And last but not least, let's take a look at our broader 2020 watch list. Air Canada, Tillery, and Carnival, three biggest gainers, and Kinross, Charlotte's Web, and JNUG, three biggest losers. So guys, that's it for the video. Let me know what you think. Drop those comments below. Let me know your thoughts on Tesla. I'm out of here. Always remember departures capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.